Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very, very special edition on your favorite show, which is Talk of the Town. This is your host, Monty. We are here in Fort Lauderdale. As Mother Teresa wisely said, that if you cannot feed 100 people, at least feed one. Philanthropy is a gift to mankind. And there are very few people in this world who are blessed and gifted with this gesture, with this great God gift of giving to our people. And we are one sitting with one of them, that's Dr. Pallavi Patel. Dr. Patel, thank you so much for joining us on B4U. Thank you for having me. You've had a beautiful, beautiful journey uh, with Dr. Kiran Patel. I know this show, and because of a time constraint, we wouldn't be able to go through that entire beautiful journey in one episode. I think we'll need multiple and lots and lots of episodes to overcome that journey. But a few highlights of your ecstatic journey that you can share with us. We had a white coat ceremony for Nova University. We met with them formally only 100 days ago. And uh, together we decided that we like to affiliate our vision and our projects and therefore uh, have uh, Dr. Kiran Patel's name on the Florida, the, their osteopathic medical school. Um, and here we are today, formally announcing um, the KCOM. Transformation. The transformation, yes. So that's amazing journey we had. Well, this I could say that this could be just one of those. And you know, going back in time, that uh, you know, I would like to share with the audience. A lot of people who know you, a lot of people who don't know you. You know, you've mm -hmm. uh, gone to medical school in in Ahmedabad, and then you know you came to the U.S. You met Dr. Patel in Ahmedabad. You know, you went to Columbia we University. Had, yes, we, we have a wonderful journey, uh, like a storybook. We I was born. Love, we would love to know that storybook. <laughs> See, that's what we're all about. Yes, so um, I was born and raised in Ahmedabad. And I was very fortunate to go to a nice school, Sharda Mandir. Um, and uh, from there, I went on to going into the medical school. Uh, my husband, or Dr. Kiran Patel, or Dr. K, that people call him fondly. Yes, so they call him Dr. Yeah, K. Dr. K. So mm -hmm. he was born in Zambia, Africa, and he spent his childhood up to the age of 16. Then he did his um, A level and O level with in, the Cambridge University. In, in UK? Yes. Right, right, right. Uh, so, and after that, his father decided to send him to India for medical education Very nice. and followed by his younger brothers also who all came to Ahmedabad for their further education. So we met in medical school first year of our first MBBS. Him being such a dynamic, tall, Great personality from strong, UK. <laughs> yes, leader and visionary guy. And I'm a nice girl from Ahmedabad, Ahmedabad. dancing, singing and uh, easy going. Uh, enjoying my life, was really impressed with this dynamic person coming from Africa and wanting to be a class representative in the first week of the school. Where Wonderful. So he was a leader. He was a born leader. He was always leader. a leader. There are 80% of the kids are local and he thinks that he can be the class representative, elected class representative right, right, of right. that class. Amazing. And amazingly, he did that. So from that time, uh, I mean, we we became best friends. We did our. So medical it wasn't love at first sight. Uh, well, kind of it a was. At first sight. We are still sight. trying to figure out <laughs> who was looking at who. <laughs> it is amazing. I was doing my garba practice with a bunch of ladies, and usually, like as usual, the guys were watching the practice. The practice. Right. <laughs> and every time I do my turn for my one of the step. He was looking at me. Yeah, and but you so, were looking at him too, because you. So, <laughs> ne so next thing I'm trying to figure out: is he still looking? All right. So during this time, his friend says, "Do you notice that that girl is staring at you?" And he says, "No, really." So he started looking more. <laughs> so we still are trying to figure out. Uh, so it was amazing, and and we became a pair. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so that's how the journey began, and after we finished over medical school, we came to Zambia after uh, we got married. Oh, you went back to Zambia? Yes, yes, Okay, yes, Not no. you didn't come straight to New York? Uh, no, first we came to Zambia, his parents and the family was still living there. 
uh, did one year of our residency to match their requirement and we started private practice and before we know it we had more than one practice one two three four that's the way Kiran always does it he never sits in one location or one business he likes to expand he likes to grow really fast grow. and all wonderful wonderful what a what a beautiful start to this great journey we, we want we want to know more because Gujarat, Zambia, now U.S., and if I'm not mistaken, my research, you guys were in the tri-state, in New York, New Jersey. Yes. That's where you guys, and then I wanted to know the reason why you moved from there to Tampa. Yes. Because that, that was the big move. Big move and some da destiny, something told us that that is where you should go. But Something was calling. calling. Ek that was a calling. I was there. And that determined mind, Kiran ka determined mind, was uh, playing a major role in that. So his mind was, he was the one who made this decision. Did yes. you have any troubles in like, no, Kiran, we, we're not going to go to Tampa. There's no, something but stopping me. Uh, what was going on was, uh, I was doing my pediatric residency. Yes. Kiran was doing his cardiology, cardiology and fellowship correct. and everything. In Columbia. We were finishing Columbia affiliated. Affiliated, yeah. okay. So okay. Uh, we were finishing up and uh, six months before that, uh, he saw a ad in the journal, JAMA, uh, a, a practice for sale. Now, also at the same time, we had a property, a motel in Florida, in Tampa, that his brother was in charge of. And we used to come for a vacation. Every break we got, we wanted to get away from that get cold and that. chilly weather. So we came to uh, uh, Tampa. So we were starting to fall in love with Tampa. There was a, a medical practice for sale in Tampa. In Tampa. So Kiran sent a telex. And in 1982, you cannot use a cell phone or email. Yeah, there was so nothing said, in that time. Yeah. <laughs> so he sends a telex. I am interested in buying your practice. And next day he flew to Tampa, made a deal that he could not refuse. So we bought our practice before even we were finishing up our residency and fellowship. And so we were supposed to start that and, and be there three months before we finished. But anyway, we managed, we managed, and we, that's what, that was our first medical practice. But within three years, as his nature, he started expanding, buying second, third, fourth. At one point, we had 23 locations. That is amazing. So that is the business sense that, or the business mind. But the business acumen along with that that great medical. knowledge, the medical knowledge that he had, yeah. that great combination, which is very rare. Very rare. Very rare. And you did not get that that success in in New York, New Jersey. But the moment you guys moved to Florida, yes. maybe the Sunshine State was yes. basically the calling. True, true. And during the time in Tri-State, we were still doing our residence and also right, right. Uh, that was not an option. But again, there, while we were growing our business empire, so to speak. Uh, we also work really into preserving our Indian culture. Actually, our original plan was that once we are successful up to certain level, we will go back to India because we wanted to raise our children in India. We and get the same culture yeah, back. We wanted right. to instill that culture in our children. But we were so successful. We were, our life was moving so rapidly. Right. Uh, we just could not stop and say, okay, this is enough. And again, what happened is we started getting involved more and more in the Indian community and uh, built an India culture, a cultural center, ICC. We start, he started uh, first India festival in Tampa Bay area, which is very popular and successful now into its uh, 28th or 30th year. So a lot of things happened where we could to maintain and instill the Indian culture in our children and the whole community. These were some of the wonderful things, and anybody in Tampa Bay area or Florida can talk about this. Can talk about this. In and at, at this point of time, do you want to talk about you know your hospitals in in India, and let you know? I know you're very modest and you don't <laughs> wish to mention it, but I really want our people because it could it's be an encouragement a motivation for a lot of people who yes. are watching us. I understand, I understand. No, I, I can see it, but we've been presented with a lot of opportunities uh, to do good things. Um, uh, over the period, he has been um, president of uh, API, 
American right. Association, Association of, of Physicians, yeah, Physicians Indian. of Correct. Indian Origin. Yes. And in uh, different capacity on different organizations, but when the earthquake happened in India, 2000, at year 2000, right. yeah, a lot of hospitals go, got uh, demolished in Kutch area. So we were instrumental and um, bringing in funds, getting matching funds, and we were able to revive four hospitals there. So that was a great thing, and it's still, right now, very busy. Those are very busy hospitals, but our hospital in Muta Foforia has been a phenomenal success, and one of a kind because it is first public private sector project that Gujarat government did back in 1998. Very good. So there has been uh, many things that we have been the first, first to make it happen. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll keep talking to the Patels. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back with the man himself, Dr. Kiran Patel. Stay tuned. You're watching Be For You. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You're watching your favorite show, Talk on the Town, on your favorite channel, that's Be For You Music. Before going into a break, I promised you that I'll be back with a very, very special guest. We are very honored, privileged, and it's absolutely our pleasure to have the one and only, the philanthropist, Dr. Kiran C. Patel on Be For You. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. As Mother Teresa wisely said, if you cannot feed 100 people, at least feed one, because that gesture can change lives. Philanthropy is a gift of God to humans, and there are few humans who get the blessing and are able to pass it on to other mankind and Dr. Patel is one of them. So let's start about this journey. Let's get to know more about you. Uh, we do know a lot about you, but there is a major portion of our audience who would like to know a little bit about this beautiful journey of yours. Fundamentally, like any human beings, my initial focus was to ensure my family is stable and carried out over in a proper way. Fortunately, with two of us being doctors, that aspect was never a challenge. Since my early childhood, my father, who has been my role model, I was observing him and seeing that he, when he started in Africa with very little income, very little resources, was able to do a lot of things. So first, I feel that when somebody measures philanthropy only in terms of money, it's not right I or agree. it's not fair. I agree with you. I believe that money is something that one can create. Sure. But time is something that only God can create. Absolutely. Very well said. Very well said. So, to me, anybody that volunteers his or her time is doing a lot for the community and service. So from my early childhood, I had observed my dad that any opportunity, however small, he would not miss to assist somebody in any way he can. And the philosophy I've learned is at least if you can't do good, do no harm. Wow. If you can't do good, at least don't do no harm. Very. Also, amazing. that means in thought, action and deed. Even if you talk about somebody bad, it's not achieving anything, why do it? That's bad karma. Yeah. So if you can't say a good word, don't say anything. Wow. So moving ahead from that, I have been fortunate because I have always attempted to achieve things that most people will say is not possible. So when I came into Tampa early on, my journey started and my philosophy of taking care of the patients was not to see what insurance they have. Okay. I would take care of any patient that comes to my door. So in the mid 80s, when the HMO came into being, nobody 
no physicians wanted to see those patients. Right. And I was taking care of them. So it resulted in me quickly having over 26 locations where I was catering for these type of patients. Every time, had I been focused on, I will only see this patient if he has this type of insurance, I could have never been where I am today. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I see it to many people, if you do the right things for right reasons, right result will follow. The other thing is I say, don't chase money because money will chase you. So if you can keep doing what you are supposed to do, then you'll be okay. So in Tampa, in the early days, we were able to, I was instrumental in, with the community support, start the India Cultural Center, Hindu Temple, Jain Temple, you name it. So we started initially with the family to the Indian community. Then I did some things in India, hospitals, because my father wanted one. In Zambia, did an HIV hospice center paid for several kids to have heart surgery. I can go and on and on, but essentially, I was born in Zambia. I am of Indian origin, and I settled in United States, and I had education under the British system. Absolutely, you went to, you went to Cambridge in, in UK. No, actually I had a Cambridge University degree, Cambridge but it was, obtained by British educational system in Zambia. In Zambia, got it. So got it. essentially what I say is I am a nomad or a global citizen. Nomad. <laughs> but coming back to the HMO subject, that, that period, that phase from 82 to 2002, that was basically the turning point of your, of your career, if I could say that, where you could use your business acumen and your medical knowledge. Because there are a lot of doctors in this country. A lot of fabulous, talented doctors, but you have, you have a skill. You have you are blessed with something which people are not. Yeah. You have the business acumen along with medicine, where you sold the HMO to a very to a very good so, price. If you can share about that period of your I, life, I had started my life in Tampa with a practice where my first month's income was three thousand dollars. First month's income was three thousand dollars, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening. And then in 2002, when I exited, my monthly income was $100 million. So from $3,000 to $100 million, a perfect example that anything is possible in this country. You can live your dreams. You need to have a heart and belief. It was a great journey, true American dream story. I was fortunate enough to enjoy that. And that's when I started to expand my wings of support to the broader community, including the mainstream American projects that include a Pallavi Patel conservatory. conservatory. Then I started the school, medical, uh, a college of uh, sustainability at University of South Florida. South Florida. Was that $12 million or $25 million that it, you donated? Yes, uh, I, I think sticking to numbers I don't like, but okay. it, I was the single largest Not donor sure. for University of South Florida okay. in its 50-year history at that time. And this time I am, there are only seven people who have given the size of donation I'm giving to University of Nova. So, but putting dollars aside, I think the impact is what I'm talking about. There was a research center, so as you can see, I have two types of uh, charities that I call. One is the legacy type of gifts, which are the performing arts center, the colleges, etc., because you know that perpetually they are going to be in existence. Sure. Then the others are what I call a sustainable charity. So our philosophy is to have an impactful, sustainable and replicable charities. I usually don't focus on individual people because the need of an individual is so high that it is very difficult for us to fulfill the needs of everybody. The problem is so vast that no government, no individual or corporation can fulfill everybody's needs. So 
So it is better to focus on charities that are going to impact a lot of lives and transform a lot of lives. And that's where I believe that the best gift anybody can give to anybody is education. Because once you're educated, you're, all your doors open and you can transform society. That's amazing, Dr. Patel. I would like to know more, a little bit more about your Clearwater project because that is something which a lot of uh, young students are looking forward to, uh, which is going to happen in 2018, 2019. You're building a osteopathic uh, medical college. So today, University of Nova has 250 students a year. By expanding the campus in the Clearwater Beach area, which will need an investment of over $200 million. And you're doing that? And I am committing to do that. But what it will do is add 150 doctors. Totally now, instead of 250 doctors, we'll be producing 400 doctors a year. And that, if you think about in 10 years, will produce 4,000 wow. doctors. Wow. In 20 years, almost 10,000 10, doctors. doctors. And you can imagine that when each doctor has a 30 to 50 patient contacts, some people in research, some people in pharmaceutical industry, imagine the type of impact this contribution will give. So it's not the dollar amount, but if you look at the impact of it, you will see that the amount of investment is minuscule compared to the impact it will have on the society and the world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what you call a visionary. That's what you call a living legend. We've heard the names of Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Warren Buffett, but we, and also Azim Premji, but we have someone amidst us Dr. Kiran C. Patel. We'll speak more to him, more about his Windham project, more about his expansion into media, his involvement into the hotel industry as well. Stay tuned, keep watching before you, Doctor. We'll catch you more in a more casual atmosphere tomorrow and we'll chat more at the beach. Okay. Pleasure, sir.